Eivor, are you prepared to go to Ireland? Asar, you did not tell me the king was my cousin. It was most amusing this way, was it not? A little mystery. I prefer to know what is what. But it was a pleasant surprise. He's eager to see you. Shall we set sail? Yeah. I would like to see this land. And my cousin Baudith. Patchwork of petty kings jostling for hills and pastures and green, green glens. My adopted isle. Azar, how is it that Barith, as Norse as ice, is king of Dublin? Dublin is a Viking city, Eivor. But in fact, merchants and beggars come from all parts to parade in its muddy streets. Ought to think of Barith as king of a city. It perhaps sounds grander than it is. Ireland has many, many kings. They litter the countryside, and Barith's throne is not secure. Flan Shinna calls the tune. Who's he? Soon to be crowned High King of all Ireland. Flan distrusts Vikings, though he needs them. Barith will find a way. As a boy, he wasn't much of a fighter, but somehow always came out all right. I'm sure what you say is true. Certainly he is loved by his people. Your crew can find lodging here. Come, let us find Barith. Eivor! Blood of my blood! Look at you! You have on thrust us cheekbones! <laughs> and you, the seven-year-old lives in you still. It has been a long stretch since we pelted old Ganfrid with apple cores. <laughs> he never forgave us that. And Sigurd in the clan? How goes with all? There is much to tell you, Barith. But let me breathe your Irish air. Thank you for keeping my ports from being set ablaze in my absence. My ports? Yes, old man. I can rule my city even without you here. Eivor, you arrive in good time. I'm hosting a feast in honor of my son, Sifrith. He is 17 today. A 17-year-old son. 
And rather a difficult boy at that. Come, there's much to show on the way to my castle. A kingship, a son, and a castle. Truly, you have a fine life, Barry. Castle? It is a wooden house. Finely crafted, to be sure, but in Shiraz, it would be home to a middling rug merchant. Lead me to your rug merchant's wooden hovel, Badith. Just look at her docks. Ye babe of a city, but the biggest port in all Ireland. You cannot appreciate Irish air without enduring the stench of our dogs. It is upon the strength of this port I plan to secure my kingship. Assad told me that your throne may not be entirely steady. King Flan needs some persuading is all. Dublin's vast trade web will bring wealth to all Ireland. If Flan can be made to see that, my kingship and that of my children's children will be safe. I cannot guarantee your throne, but a vast trading web is within my power. No one else I trust my commerce to, old man. <laughs> you let him call you that? I call him worse things. Barith, my king! I still owe you a horn of ale. This is where I leave you. Don't miss the banquet. I'll be there shortly. Aoife, this is my cousin, Eivor. Show him the bow I had you make for him. This is for me? The craftsmanship is beautiful. Me best work. Give her a try. Hit the targets before the sand runs out. Think you can get them all? Of course I will. Stand ready to be astonished. Aren't you the confident one? Sure I'll be embarrassed for you if you shat on the eggs. Watch my arrows fly. I certainly will. Go! <laughs> Damn good shot! <laughs> Very nice bow. Thank you, Barith. Steps off the boat after a long sea voyage and shoots like a master. Well done, Gutten. Wait, is that a house of God? Aye, Christ's own church. Ireland is mostly Christian now, and so is Dublin. Many Norse chew the wafer. You make a place for them. Them? I myself have a place in Christ's house, as I do in the house of Thor. So long as a god has my back, he has my altar. I've built this city up from rubble. Twenty years ago, us Vikings were beat. The Irish took revenge and sacked Dublin. Asar told me that it's a Viking city. Norse founded it, and I nursed it back to health. When I became king, I was king of a mud pit. There, up ahead, my home. <laughs> my only regret is that my mother and my wife aren't here to greet you. They've gone on pilgrimage to the mountains just now. The waters there improve mother's health. I am left to discipline my wayward son. And to host a banquet. Which should be already underway. Up, Barred, for dear. <laughs> Here we are. Please, go enjoy yourself. I must have a word with my son. Come meet him before the night's out. Azar, I was not sure if I would see you here. Why is that? 
I thought you'd rather take stock of your wares than placidly observe caterwauling Vikings. And you... you would rather spend time with this gossiping Ganti? I know few people here, and of them, I know you are the one who is always ready with a sweet anecdote. I do have some information you may find interesting. Siegfried's stomach doesn't agree with cheese. Had an accident about it last week. The embarrassing, bed-changing kind. He shat himself? Mortifying for a lad of that age. The kind of thing that would devastate him in front of his comrades, if one needed ammunition. Thank you, Asar. Your company is always enlightening. What do you expect, fuck? Hey! You're Boris' cousin. It's a grand do, isn't it? Sigfrid! I expect my son to act like the future king, not roll in the muck. So Flan will take you on as his farting court jester. Think with your head and not your arse. Flan can assure my throne, which will one day be yours. That makes you the arse. Enough! Eivor, my son, Siegfried. I'm sorry, I... I must clear my head. Could you speak to the boy? I was looking forward to meeting my cousin's son. So, you're the cousin who Da speaks so fondly of. Is the old fool reduced to importing Vikings now? In Norway, you'd be knocked to the ground by now. Come on, then. If you've any guts worth respecting. Fine, whelp. You won't land a single punch. <laughs> Yes, I owe you thanks for not beating me, bloody. I'm not here to quarrel with you, Siegfried. Da speaks so highly of you. I wanted to see if you lived up to the stories. Does anyone? You're unhappy with how your father rules. Da has the makings of a fine king. But he chooses to play the unctuous merchant instead. A visit to Norway might do a young viking girl like you some good. I'd love to go with Da. Maybe the homeland would kindle his warrior spirit. Give Dublin a fair and fearsome king. I've lost track of your father. Any idea where he might be? He wanted to clear his head. That means he's visiting grandfather's grave. Da has a chat with him almost every day. Bardith can commune with the dead? <laughs> no. His conversations are all one-sided. The grave sits at the top of the hill. I'll find him. Thank you, Siegfried. Eivor! Teach me how to hit like that sometime.
Show me. Bardith. Huh. Why so uneasy? <sighs> A king must forever be on guard. When I'm upset or uncertain, I come here to seek my father's spirit. I didn't even ask after him. Somehow I knew he'd... Some years ago, he was destined to die in battle, and he did. He sits with Odin now. My family owes yours a solemn debt. That winter, your family came to stay with us. I remember your birth, screaming like a warrior. The plague year. No one would take us in. No one but your mother and father. I owe your family my life. And what a life we had. I have fond memories of you and I slipping out to hunt. <laughs> in dead of night. Stars in the sky, moonlight and snow. <laughs> and that's how I got that scar. <laughs> I do feel bad about that. What about the one on your cheek? This? A caution from the gods about my vanity. Come, if we tell all our stories, we'll be here a week. Do you see something? My imagination run amok, but let us away. Funny how just the slightest noise sets a fellow on edge. Why Thor's hammer, Barith? I could sleep a week. Not as spry as the old days, eh? when we searched the night in hopes of catching a will-o'-the-wisp. Did we catch one? I have a memory of catching one. to the throne has not been without Abel, let's continue. My ascension to the throne has not been without contest. The previous king's son, Thorstein, is resentful. You told me nothing of this. You are my guest. I'm not going to burden you with petty concerns. Petty concerns? I now know why you've been anxious all evening. I... tis worrying. He's never been so bold before. He sees you as a usurper to his throne. Perhaps, but he doesn't seem to want to take it. He contents himself by stealing and smuggling with his band of ruffians. It's petty Viking raiding, but it puts me in a bad light with Flan. That's certain. Keep a sharp watch. Brigands rove the streets tonight. You can be sure of me, my king. I am always the last to leave a party. What is wrong? We were ambushed by Thorstein's men. Rivals I was not made aware of. Small wonder King Flan does not embrace you, Bardet. You cannot keep control of the Vikings in your own city. 
Thorstein makes me look like more of an arse than I do on my own. I see. It is the High King's disfavor that makes this shameful. My cousin, I will take care of Thorstein. No, I do not want to drag you into this sorry mess. Perhaps he'll accept Silver to lie low. For a week or two, but then he'll be back and back again. I can remove this blood once and for all. Eivor, this is not your fight. For any and all of your God's sakes, Barith, let Eivor help you. As of this moment, Barith, my arm is yours. Whatever is needed to bring Flan's smile upon you, I will do. Eivor, I have never been so happy. Your family saved mine those years ago. A fitting reply would be to secure your throne. I will start with Thorstein. It happens that Siegfrith may know something. He once ran with Thorstein's gang. Sadly true. Seek him tomorrow in the marketplace. After a night of carousing, he likes to recuperate there. We will begin to forge a bond with High King Flan on Rise of Sun. <laughs>